Hi, Bratwa. Panel Colony number nine. Let's greetings to panel colony number six in St. Petersburg. Panel colony number ten, Tver City. Greetings. We're fine. Join us. We'll fight together. This video shows Russian prisoners agitating to join the Wagner private military company and go to war in Ukraine. Most importantly, guys, if they say they are sending us like cannon fodder, don't believe it. None of us will clear minefields with our feet. Putin is increasingly relying not on the military units of the Russian Federation in the war with Ukraine, but on volunteers, which, among other things, consist of Russian prisoners. This conclusion was made by experts from the American Institute for the Study of War. In a new report, they suggested that the head of the Kremlin is bypassing the high military command after successful counteroffensive of the armed forces of Ukraine in the Kharkiv region. Now, Russian troops and private military companies have created a real can wear of death for their volunteer battalions in Ukraine. They recruit people, sign contracts and throw them on the front line. There is no question of any coordination of the troops. It begins after four months of throughout combat training. These private military companies in the Donetsk direction suffer huge losses, but they continue to advance, unlike regular units of the Russian armed forces. Private military companies are forcing contractor servicemen to go on the offensive, because no one has cancelled the contract. Oleg Zhdanov, military expert on air of New Time Radio. Information about the recruitment of prisoners began to appear in the media this summer when the advance of Russian troops in fact stopped. A video allegedly showing Evgeny Prigozhin, owner of the Wagner private military company, trying to recruit prisoners in one of the Russian prisons was shared on social media on September 14th. The war is hard. It is not like any Chechen war. The first scene is desertion. No one gives back. No one surrenders. The press service of the Concord Company, through which the businessman usually makes his statements, confirmed that the prisoners are indeed sent to war, adding, quote, other private military companies and convicts or your children decide for yourself. Human rights activist Sergei Savelyev is sure that prisoners are forced to sign up for a private military company. Our numerous sources confirmed that it's really him. He was identified by his appearance, by his manner of holding himself by his voice. Given his speech in that very viral video, he practically equated himself to God. After all, he said, quote, right there that either God or Allah or I can take you from here, but I can return you alive. According to Sergei Savelyev, almost 90% of prisoners do not return from the war in Ukraine. Either they die in battle or they are killed on their own. We know about the practice of barrier troops of the professional military and even private military companies. We know about the practice of executions for disobeying orders. Perhaps it is the rules of this organization and of Putin himself, because all this operates under his auspices. This is done so that as many people as possible do not come back and can't tell how things really are. Earlier, members of the Presidential Council for Civil Society and Human Rights demanded clarification from the Russian Prosecutor General's office on what basis the recruited prisoners are released from places of detention. Human rights activist Eva Mirkachova said that the recruitment of prisoners by the Wagner private military company is absolutely illegal, and people who have committed mostly serious violent crimes have been recruited to Ukraine. It is hard to imagine such people being entrusted with weapons. Russia has fallen into some kind of illegal zone with the recruitment of prisoners. According to the law, any change in the regime has to be decided by a court, the president or the state Duma, and not as a part of a contract signed by the prisoner with God knows who. Many people, including members of the Federal Penitentiary Service, said to us, thank you for this appeal. Eva Mirkachova, member of the Council for Civil Society, human rights under the president of Russia in an interview with current time.
The general staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine reported that the prisoners sent from the Russian Federation had already been placed at a training ground near Torres, Donetsk region. The occupiers set up a training camp for personnel who arrived from places of detention to resupply the units of the 1st Army Corps that suffered losses during the hostilities. They have no motivation to fight for Russia, to die for Russia. Their only motivation is what was imposed by propaganda, its money and freedom. Meanwhile, journalists from the Russian edition of Important Stories referring to the data of relatives of prisoners reported that at least 6,000 Russian prisoners could have been recruited for the war in Ukraine, while more than 2,000 of them had already been taken to the combat zone. However, the human rights activist says that there are twice as many prisoners recruited for the war, about 11,000 people. It's the this is the official data. It is verified with those people with whom it was possible to somehow contact, or with relatives. This is a figure that cannot be in doubt, but it seems to be that a huge number of people were recruited by passing such statistics. Many of those held in places of detention do not have relatives. I would call more than 20. This figure, as well as the victims of the Russian army on the territory of Ukraine, is many times underestimated. In addition to prisoners, Russia is also trying to recruit students. According to the activists of the Kafkas Reali Media Project, large banners with advertisements of Wagner private military company appeared near universities in the cities of the Rostov region. The pro-presidential United Russia Party suggested that the Minister of Education and the Minister of Science and Higher Education give students participating in the military invasion of Ukraine academic leave reported by Ksenia Buha, Victoria Sinko, UATV News.